You have a boring old motherboard without M2 slot, but you want to use an MVME disk anyway? In this video, I'm going to show you how to install an MVME M2 drive onto an old generation Asus motherboard that does not have an NVMe port. And the disk will also be bootable. I will start by making a review on the main types of disk that can be found today. I won't talk about mechanical hard drive because they are really below SSD performance wise. So basically the main SSD disk found currently are 2.5 inch SATA, SATA in M2 or NVMe in M2. M2 is not a type of disk, it does not define an interface. It's just the form factor, so it's the shape and size that the disk will have. And so we can find M2 either in SATA or in NVMe. Between SATA 2.5 and SATA M2, there are no real difference in terms of performance. Basically, the interface is SATA. What will really make a difference is precisely the interface with the NVMe. With the NVMe, we have a PCI Express interface that is much faster than the SATA. We have performance between 6 and 7 times higher, writing and reading speeds are really increased. I needed a new disk, but I wanted a disk that I could put in a future PC with NVMe port. I didn't want to buy a SATA disk that is almost already obsolete. So I decided to try and install an NVMe disk on my old motherboard, even if it has no M2 NVMe port. To install the disk, I needed an MVME to PCI Express adapter. My motherboard is an Asus P8Z77V which hosts an i5-3570K. I had to read the manual to see what was available in terms of PCI Express slots. My graphic card is installed in port 2, which is a 3.0 PCI Express port. I'd like to use my adapter on a 3.0 PCI Express rather than the 2.0 because it's faster. So I will install the adapter on the port 5, which is the same type of port as the one for the graphic card, meaning it's a X16. So I look for an adapter on the internet. I have found X16, X4 and X2 adapters. But roughly, X16 is useless because as you can see on the picture here, even if they are in X16, only the X4 part is used. The rest of the pin are not connected to anything at all. It is just used to hold the card more firmly in the slot. And also X4 can be plugged into X16. By comparing the existing product, my choice went to the adapter ECM25 from Silverstone. I chose this one because it has this little thing at the end that allows it to be used easily in a X16 port without too much risk that it moves. I put the disc in the adapter. There is nothing complicated, there is only one screw. Once you have mounted the disk on the board, just plug it into the PCI Express slot that you choose. It clicks, so it means it's in place. Now that the disk is ready, I can start the computer. Unfortunately, the disk does not appear in Windows and it does not appear in the BIOS either. To remedy this, I will update my BIOS. To update the BIOS, I go to the Asus website by typing Asus driver on Google. Then there is something called the Download Center. I indicate that this is for a motherboard, it's an Intel, and then I can type the name of my board. I go to Driver and Tools, I can go directly to BIOS and Firmware and download the BIOS. Then I need to extract it. I use 7-zip, but any extractor will do. I copy the file in the root of C so I can find it more easily when I'm in the BIOS. Then I restart the computer. I press Dell to enter the BIOS. Next, I have to click on Advanced Mode or F7 and use the Easy Flash Utility Tools. Now I need to find the place where I put the file. So there, it's in the C. I select the file, I click OK, and here we go, it's going to install the new BIOS. So now I go back to the BIOS, I'm going to check that it's the new version that is installed. And yay, I see it's the same that I download on the Asus website. Back in Windows, we can see that there is an e-disk that has appeared. 
So now I can use the disk in Windows, but it's not bootable. It means that I cannot install Windows on it. So I'm going to show you how I made it bootable. This step is a little more tricky and a little more dangerous. So it's up to you to choose if you want to try to make your disk bootable or not. In theory, this method that I'm going to present you is valid for all legacy ASUS cards that have an AMI BIOS, also known as American Megatrans BIOS. I will put the links to the file I used in the description. To make the disk bootable, I need to insert a module in the BIOS. I downloaded the latest version of the BIOS, so this is the BIOS, this is the module, and this is the tool with which I'm going to insert the module. I launch the tool, I load the BIOS image, I need to find the good volume in the BIOS region section. It's the one where the DXE module are. You can click on each volume to search them, or you can use File, then Search. I also need to make sure that I'm in the same volume as the DXE driver called CSM Core. Now I have to insert the module after the last DXE driver. So I'm going down. I right click on the last DXE driver and I choose insert after. I select the new driver file that will allow me to have the full functionality of my NVMe. Once inserted, I save the modified image. I rename it with something close to the initial name, so I just add mod at the end of the name. I open it to check that everything is okay. And yes, I can see that the new module is here. To find it more easily, I copy the file in the root of C. And now let's see if I break my motherboard. So now I'm in the BIOS and I go in the advanced mode to install this model version of the BIOS. To do that, I have to go in tool, then the flash utility and find my C drive. I select the modify BIOS and then click yes. And voila! Security verification failed. But don't panic, I found out how to pass the security check. The problem is that the Easy Flash security check if the file is intact and it's not because I have modified it. To flash the BIOS with the modded file, I use an Asus utility called II Suit. For my motherboard, I have to use the version 2. I'm downloading it from the Asus website. I will put the link in the description. Once it's installed, I click on Update and go to Asus Update. Then I choose Update the BIOS from a file. I click Next and give it the official file. I wait until the next button appears. When it appears, I don't click on it. I go where I put the BIOS, so here is the BIOS I just gave the utility. I'm going to rename it. I add .old at the end. And this is the one that is modded. I give it the name of the official BIOS. The software will think it's the official one, since it's in the same directory and it has the same name. So there, if I click next, it will flash my BIOS. When it's finished, I reboot the computer and go back in the BIOS. It works, I didn't crash the motherboard. The disk will not appear in the bootable choice. For it to appear, I have to install an OS. So I'm going to install Windows. Here, I have to put everything on UEFI for the Windows installation. Especially for the PCI Express, since it's where the NVMe is connected. I can save and exit. And now I boot on the USB key where the installation of Windows is. Now we see that the disk is bootable since the installation of Windows continues after the reboot. So here we are back in the BIOS after the Windows installation is finished. And here is the disk. If I go to the advanced option, I can choose booting on it. There that the USB key and there you can choose between the USB key and the NVMe drive to boot. I can do one more test. I save and reset and then Windows starts, so everything is okay. I hope this video was helpful. Subscribe if you want more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you next time.